Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today we gather at the new moon time, working with the energy of Virgo. And we invoke its potency to assist us in our work as we come for the final session, as we see it now, of our open forum. This open forum been called as a recognition of a crisis that the esoteric community together with humanity is facing now. The questions that came in front of the group a few months ago were how we recognize what is truth when there is such a diversity of perception of what is truth. How do we in our circle work with different perspectives and how we all those different perspectives in our space, making it safe to share, no matter how different is your view from the rest of the group. And then the second question, how, what we do with that diversity of the views and how we take all that diversity into the group chalice, bringing it into the synthetic meditation. Where we as a group could align with the hierarchical vision. And therefore, the challenge for the group, and it's challenge not just for our group, it's challenge for all esoteric community, is how we can integrate the diversity of perceptions into more synthetic ashramic vision. Throughout the last month, we had several meetings where we meditated together, reflected and shared intuiting answers to these questions, listening to each other and to the group soul, trying to become that ashramic conduit. And as we were listening, to those impressions, our sense of the group purpose were slowly refining. And so today we invite us to focus on the purpose of our work, recognizing the meditation for the common good project as a space for practical experiments, working as a group that in aspires to become an ashramic outpost. In preparation for this meeting, uh, we listened uh, to the recordings of the previous meetings and we share the recordings of those meetings with you. If you don't have them, please let us know. We will be happy to share. Trying to synthesize 
uh, different threads, different ideas. Um, we prepared a questionnaire that uh, would help us to together to reflect on those questions deeper and trying to verbalize our answers as clear as possible. And we're really grateful to those of you who found time to uh, sh share your responses. And those responses uh, helped us to move closer to refining the statement of purpose. And so uh, in preparation to this meeting, our focalizing triangle, uh, Birgitta, Tracy, and me, we uh, talked about our next steps. And uh, we realized that The th three main questions that we had uh, for this open forum, we uh, got pretty close to finding the answers to the, those questions. And so today we will focus on the purpose. And uh, we will start our conversation by uh, offering a draft uh of possible statement of purpose. And it's, that draft is based on the synthesis of all the sharings through this month, including the questionnaire. And uh, at the end today, as we pre will prepare to the meditation, we will invite us to tune in with the, our sense of the purpose one more, one more time. And we'll ask each of us to try to express our sense of the purpose with words that most fits to your sense of the group purpose. And through our meditation, we will sound the intention. Intention that's will be accumulated through our group sharings of perception of the purpose. And we will use the energy of the new moon to magnetize that intention and radiate. As for the second question that we were reflecting throughout this month about how do we ensure our space allows safety of sharing diverse views, accepting love and deep listening, with accepting love and deep listening. Our recognition of our focalizing triangle was that um, the responses that we received to the questionnaire where there was this specific question is included, we got very practical uh, ideas and we can just use the summary of those ideas as our guidance to build a safe space for difficult conversations. And uh, we will, uh, by the next meeting, we will offer you a more synthesized version uh, of those uh, guidelines and we uh, will be open for more input from you. And so we could, with time, as we practice, we can uh, adjust uh, those um, uh, further. Um, and as for this third question, how can the group move from diversity of views into synthetic meditation that invites inclusive ashramic vision It was shared at the last meeting that the first step is our work this month. It's already been done. It's focusing and formulating our intention to become that conduit, to become that space that allows that synthetic meditation. And this intention will be in the center of all our work. And as for the practical side of this meditation, we'll follow the hint provided by the Tibetan master 
that uh, an initiate knows because he or she works. We will learn to do to create that meditative space together through our practice, asking for feedback and adjusting and further with each iteration perfecting our group meditation. So this is my uh, introduction and summary of our work uh, this month. And I invite us now to follow our ritual that's been developed through last few years of working in our circle with a focused meditation for the common goods. And that ritual we call the name circle. And I invite Tracy to lead us in this ritual. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the center of the group gathered today, as each one of us calls ourself into this circle. Alexander. Alexander Ilchuk, calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Gorgita. Hello, Birgitte Rasmussen, calling in from Slaze in Denmark. Welcome. Andrea. Hello, everyone. This is Andrea Russ, and I'm calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. Welcome. Jim. Jim Clark. Calling from Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. Welcome. Maureen. Maureen Powers from Homer, Alaska, USA. Welcome. Kiki. Kiki Bill, calling in from Washington, D.C., USA. Welcome. Helen. Helen Franklin, calling in from uh, UK, near London. Welcome. Aneta. Hello, this is the Nedelukla calling in from Sorø in Denmark. 
welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Rebecca. Hi, everyone. It's Rebecca calling in from the Sunshine Coast and the East Coast of Australia in Queensland. Welcome. Victoria. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Victoria calling from Tuscany in Italy. Welcome. Judy. Hello, everyone. This is Judy Harrison calling from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome. Lynn. Hi, hello, this is Lynn Green calling from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome, Kathy. Aloha everyone, this is Kathy Heller calling in from Pahoa, Hawaii, USA. Welcome. And we have one more who I do not have a name for, but it says Leon from South Africa. I think Leone lost her connection. Ah, okay. Well, welcome, if you're still there. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
We have two draft statements of purpose we like to share. The first one, our purpose is to build a bridge of buddhic energy and bring in soul consciousness to humanity as we receive and transmit the energy. We are an Asramic outpost aligned with a divine plan as we bring buddhic buddhic ideas and impressions into higher mental forms, concretize the ideas and impressions, projecting and radiating the thought forms to humanity. We vision humanity being the seed that flower. And the second one, our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and share the diversity of perspectives seeking to transform conflict into harmony. We seek to become an Asramic outpost by building a group bridge of Buddhic energy and creating the group space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We evoke the soul of humanity. We vision humanity being the seed that flower. At this time, I would like to bring uh, to everyone what was gathered as far as the seed thoughts from our full moon and open form questionnaire. We are one of many ashramic outposts for experimental, imitational type group work. We invoke and evoke thought forms to support human soul consciousness. We establish soul, mind, brain connection to concretize ashramic impressions invoked at the time of the full moon and then evoked at the time of the new moon to assist in the one divine plan. We assist together in widening the group onto Karana as we bridge hierarchy and humanity via higher vibrational energy and magnetizing thought forms through love and spiritual will. We work together to bring fourth and seventh ray energies into balance to create harmony and order through our synthesized, diverse perspectives, all which are colorful points of light 
that combine together to create a beautiful, vibrant oneness. And lastly, we build love into matter through soul consciousness. We open the group sharing now and we invite us to continue listening with the group chalice, our group hearts, and through our sharing to try to formulate the sense of the main purpose for our work. And we also invite any sharings about the work that's been going on this month and on any of the questions that we've been discussing. So please, um, Raise your hands when you're ready to share and unmute yourself.
May I speak? <clears throat> yes, please, Martha. Gratitude. Gratitude. We know that at this time, it's gratitude and forgiveness, which are the keynotes for humanity. And I sent a little message in the chat <clears throat> to specify the hard work that's gone into this entire project we call 2025 Preparing Way. And it may be that the most challenging human process is when we dare to share ourselves in language because it always runs the risk of minimizing the heart and soul of what we mean. So this part of the project that welcomes difference and offers opportunity for sharing. This is not the only outlet for that, but it may be the hardest because it's the most concrete. And the trust and faith and active commitment on the part of all the hosts and organizers and oh my, is phenomenal and does represent the shift from planetary six to seven, in my opinion, because of the magic that takes place within this framework. So I just want to honor, what is the statement? To incarnate the word is to incarnate substance. This is the Christic impulse. This effort is the Christic impulse. Thank you. Martha. Uh, this is Judy. Um, I have been focusing on the idea of preparing the way, um, which is the subtitle after the 2025 initiative. And really considering that uh, in its fullness. And in preparing the way, we're preparing not just uh, to support humanity and its elevation of consciousness, 
but really to support um, hierarchy, to be able to descend here. Uh, we're working to uh, bring in a new civilization and a new culture. We're working to be able to support uh, the Christ uh, in his reappearance. There are so many pieces. And so when I look at the two pieces that were presented in terms of uh, purpose, um, yes, seating, elevating, it's, it's almost as if um, words alone don't encompass all the things that uh, we can prepare to do. Um, I have thought of us sometimes in terms of being a vehicle for hierarchy, being a placeholder, if you will, for hierarchy to step in when we leave something that would have permanence in terms of moving the plan forward. Um, and, and maybe that's too big an aspiration, but um, I think that if we seriously look at what it means to prepare the way and look at the piece that we're doing now and seeing how it links into a greater whole, but also supports a greater whole, in terms of all those pieces, uh, then we certainly have uh, a new set of possibilities to work with and for uh, as we move forward. Thank you. I very resonate with what Judy you just shared. Creating the vehicle for the hierarchy that would stay even when we are gone. At least that's how I've heard it. Um, I recognize that what we are trying to uh, achieve via our group process is to find forms, um, formats, rituals that would allow our group, but also any other group, to work in more Aquarian way. Of course, it's an ongoing process of precipitating that understanding of what does it mean to be an Aquarian group. But to the best of our understanding at this stage of our group evolution and to create the patterns that can be replic replicable and that would work regardless of the people who are involved in the work. As we know, often in the past, in, um, in the, throughout the whole Piscean age, work was heavily relying on individuals and in, on individual leaders. on individual disciples who would take initiative and would lead others. And in this time, it's about a group. And it's, so for us, it's a task to find those rituals that would allow the group to function regardless of the people involved. 
and therefore this one of the titles for this project is the uh, um, experiment in self-organizing group work. So how the group can sustain its purpose and its efforts following their own rituals and cycles of uh, astrological cycles and uh, other cycles. Thank you. We didn't plan this, but uh, I have a sense that maybe it would be good to share now uh, the responses we got on the questionnaire relating to the um, those guidelines that would help us to create a safe space for sharing. Um, I'll try to bring it to the screen and... Uh, um, it's uh, so far it's just a, a raw synthesis which requires further uh, um, work to um, solidify it we just didn't have a chance to finish it in time uh, I'm sorry I'm trying to find uh, the way how to share the Okay, I will stop share. I will share as a new um, screen. Okay, so um, it might be uh, too small to read, but so this is the synthesis of uh, responses to the question: What rules and procedures would you suggest to ensure our space welcomes diversity of use? And uh, I'm not going to read everything, probably, but just this: um, several categories. I will just highlight the categories of responses that would uh, in that indicate those. Uh, possible uh, guidance that it can become our ritual of holding this safe space. So it's uh, start with initial guidance, clearly articulating uh, what are the, um, what is the process. And also uh, continuously acknowledging the need uh, the, for welcoming diversity of the views. Uh, 
I hope you can read on the screen all the uh, uh, answers. Second category, uh, it's about harmlessness. That all sharings come from a place of harmlessness to support the common good. Another category of responses are related to the need to listen. Listen from the ears of the hearts of what is being brought through without the need to respond to what has been given. Next category of responses encompass the idea of um, recognizing that there is a truth be behind each sharing and that each of our sharing is a piece of puzzle. Everyone has opportunity to speak and there sh probably should be some kind of guidance about ensuring that everyone has that chance. One of the responses, uh, which is a category, category on its own, is to break the limited thought form that we have to be nice and to shield each other from uncomfortable feelings. Very interesting one, and I would say very Aquarian one. Another one is that uh, necessity to constantly remind us that it's an experiment and it's uh, not an easy work. And to be open to that and be ready to uh, change and adapt as we go. And the last but not least, calling in the power of the fourth ray, recognizing that by inviting diversity of views, we need to, we, we intend to transform that diversity into synthesis, into harmony. And therefore the fourth ray is our guiding energy. So that's it's prompt to sharing, and uh, I think it might help us in our process today. I have a question, Alexander, um, for everyone, I guess. Um, this is Lynn. Um, I'm a little unclear um, as we speak. Um, I mean, all these wonderful ideas, they're across a broad range. And um, you speak sometimes of structure. Um, sometimes I wonder if we aren't talking about more of policies or maybe habits we want to develop. Uh, I don't know how uh, how much we want to define a specific structure that's uh, sort of inherent limitations involved there. Uh, I'm just unsure about this. Um, but uh, one other thing I wanted to add is that I think um, two things that as far as the... Uh, atmosphere we're creating, two things that are probably uh, pretty broad ranging, though simple, are just the ideas of kindness and honesty, both together. Um, and also, I like the idea of 
making sure we hear each voice um, of each person as we do when we start the new moon, um, the thing we're doing today, the new moon service, um, that we hear each person's voice um, at, at some point, because that really, I do believe, as you said, connects us together, um, connects our hearts, as Tracy said. Thank you. <clears throat> mm. I believe the structure is important. Um, in a way, it's as the meditation templates that uh, we uh, often use. So there's certain structure that allows us to build a vehicle uh, to receive the energy and distribute it. So there's therefore the structure, which in a way we can call a ritual, a certain ritual of a meeting that uh, creates the structure and this uh, alignment where groups come together and when we hear the voice of each other and uh, each next uh, step, it's like that part of the structure. And the same way the uh, those principles, uh, guiding principles for the safe space to share, uh, like those structural elements of the meeting or structural elements of the meditation, they help us for actual energy to come through and for actual work to be done and it allows the, the life to feel the group chalice. If I understood your question right. So yes, there should be certain rituals that would, uh, and principles that would help us in our processes and it will help us to achieve our purpose. I understand a lot more clearly when you say ritual. Um, I think, and from your explanation, I understand more clearly. Um, and um, the ritual we've been using, I think, has been pretty effective. Um, all of that changes some between the different kinds of meetings, I guess. But it seems that it would have to include, for certain, the initial. I mean, this is very simple, I know, but it would have to include that initial um, alignment um, that we all do with one another and with the uh, with the ashram, with the higher uh, the higher consciousness uh, that we work with, um, and that could possibly be deepened um, more than what we're doing. Um, I don't know. I think we have choices as to how we fulfill that purpose, um, and I I really think that. Um, the conversations we have, um, focusing them on a particular topic or a particular energy. Um, I think that's very effective as far as I'm concerned. And um, I could I could see us even, someone uh, last meeting brought up the idea of groups working together, more groups. And I could even see, um, now and I probably don't, take part in as many things as most of you do, but I could see us um, being in touch with other groups and say even once a year or a couple times a year or once a month saying we're all going to focus in our own way upon a specific topic and then having maybe people around um, with groups around the world focusing on one topic at a specific time. Um, that might be an idea. But as far as our group work, uh, that's what seems to be important, those two things. And those are things we've been doing. We, we could possibly create more of a, of a definite ceremony for sending out the energy at the, at the close. Um, I like the summaries we've done. 
um, where we share our, our main ideas. But I think we could maybe um, do more of a sending ceremony at the end. Um, okay, those are my thoughts. It's Rebecca. Um, I'm just really interested in um, the the bringing together the idea of harmlessness and um, the statement about that. Um, it, um, I can't get the words again, Alexander. But um, about you know it, that exploring the ability to not always be comfortable. Um, because it's easy to mistake um, harmlessness for wanting to make everyone comfortable. So I, I think that's, you know, one of our edges when we try and do this work of coming together and talking about different things that um, it, it is okay to be uncomfortable. Um, and then how we deal with that discomfort in ourselves is the important thing that can let us be harmless or not or not. Um, so I think that's really something that's worth thinking about and considering maybe it would even be a good topic for a, um, one of the um, gatherings one time. Um, the other thing that I um, that struck me was what Lynn the, the the distinction that Lynn made about you know policy and and structure, the idea of policy and but then 
being able to sort of see that um, the word ritual could give a structural foundation to policy. If you if you're thinking about, I'm not sure if I'm understanding you right, Lynn, but I'm um, thinking about policy as the principles or the way that we want to behave um, and the ritual as creating a, a vehicle for the way or the habits or the way that we want to behave then um, using mantrams or creating statements that um, encapsulate our commitment to harmlessness in our conversations um, seems like a, a way a possible way to consider to bring that into action yes thank you Um, yes, and it's um, it is really a deep um, issue because when we create the ritual, there's a constant flow of energy. It's, it requires constant inflow of energy to sustain the meaning of that ritual because, like, on this planet, the tendency is to create a structure that will start um, sucking life out of uh, the meaning towards the structure. <laughs> and yes. um, in, in essentially, the matter nurtures the spirit. Essentially, matter... Um, so the, the, the actual flow is for the form to sustain the meaning until... It requires a different form, and then you know the form gets trans transformed, and you know. And I think that it is um, one of the, the um, actually support that we can get in Virgo is just to invoke that constant connection with the meaning and the capacity to restore and nurture the meaning of that harmlessness and of this principle and of those policies or whatever it is we want to <laughs> sustain. So that balance between the meaning and the form will, you know, will be living, living, <laughs> living practice. Yeah. And uh, that can include everything you mentioned, Nolian. And it's the, uh, I really appreciate you being very specific about it because specificity is also one of the mean, one of the, the protector of the meaning, you know, in a way. Can be at least. Um, so thank you very much. It is, uh, it is, it is a step towards harmlessness because I think that that is part of this principle of harmlessness when this balance and this livingness is um, enriched rather than uh, <laughs> squeezed for life, you know, to sustain the life of organization or the group or the forum or whatever it is. Like we need to pay very um, close attention to how the energy is flowing. So are we, are we revitalizing or are we draining life out of things and how do we feel after our meetings you know feel like maybe not the right word what happens with our energy levels after our meetings you know so so we really can give a feedback about that uh, about certain subjects and whatever it is a theoric feedback <laughs> i think which is important for the group to hear you know and also when you know uh, one of our members you know people who work with us is going through certain, you know, transition or whatever it is in life. Certain level of love goes towards that person and vitality and support. Um, like I still remember 
girls move, you know, in my head. In, in, it's the... Uh, it's good when we know things, maybe not in greater details, but whatever it is, just to, to know how are we, you know, and if anybody needs extra support, group support. Thank you. Over. Oh, I'd like to honor Katja's great ability to demonstrate Ray 4 at its finest between that which is inspiring and that which is draining. But it feels to me that the conversation is moving forward on this notion of revitalizing. And that in some respects, when we create ritual, we are doing the work of white magic and ritual isn't always uh, bells and candles or music it, it it can be uh, hearkening back to something that <clears throat> Rebecca instilled in our thinking process in self-organizing which is to know the difference between the principles and law and rule rule we don't actually need to think much about. So I'm glad that Lynn pointed out that this is not a policy development issue conversation, but it is very much about coming to terms with the fact that as a stable edifice is being built, it can become either a strict organization or an organism that follows the natural laws, which we recognize as economy, uh, magnetization, and, and synthesis. So if we humbly accept that our work is toward synthesis, but somewhat distant from that, we recognize that economy is about right relationship. It's not, it's not a material substance at all. And one of the things I liked about the initial statements of purpose were to acknowledge that once we've established something substantial, it's now time to bring ourselves make ourselves available to the buddhic levels and in so doing we are more effective in aiding the work of hierarchy itself which we know is on many levels and does many different functions so i'd just like us to hold on to the word that perhaps we've created a little bit more clarity on how to proceed when we think about revitalizing our rituals themselves. And I think it's been said that alignment is extremely important. Honoring diverse approaches, different angles of looking at the same diamond. And it may well be, I, I also would like, I like this exercise of that there are closing to challenge each of us to come up with the sent, a meaningful sentence that we will walk away with. So I think it's starting to happen. And I think that what certainly... Uh, Judy and Alex are hoping for that this liturgy, this ritual, pardon me, this ritual that may take on a certain calendar zodiacal, certainly zodiacal focus, is um, uh, human oriented in that we bring great limitation to this process 
And we also develop skill in um, cracking through crystallized glamours when we speak. So, so I'm thinking that all of us, I certainly would say, learning to speak insightfully is perhaps a, a good aim as we recognize that um, purpose, we begin in purpose, we express in a good orderly direction ritual, and we conclude with an open-ended intention to continue the work after the event has occurred. Sometimes, I, since we know all the work is one, it, it it's helpful sometimes to keep it open in our hearts so that each time we come to these events, we've become a little bit more refined, a little bit more polished. Thank you. I like the idea of becoming a little more polished. And I like to think that as we become a little more polished, we see through a much clearer lens and that things can look very different from one time to another. Also, I think it's very important that we allow people to speak through a different lens, that we don't come to expect certain people to speak in certain ways or have certain ideas that we um, allow people to be, to be free to see what they see in the moment at that time. Well, going on what Helen just said, to be free to see what's in the moment. I've been with you all maybe a couple of years, and it seems to me that you're doing, I mean, I'm very simple, forgive me, but it seems to me you're doing everything we're talking about. The group is doing it. And it's, do we realize we're doing it? And it, the the Tracy read a few things at the beginning that for the purpose of the work that were, that was from the input maybe, which I, I don't remember now. But I concretize something and magnetize freedom and common good. There there seem to be a few things. Yes, we can focus on. But anyway, I just feel that you're doing everything so well. That's it.
That's interesting because you know you say you are doing, but you know it's we are doing, you know, to me. And even if people in in some part of the group of one person or whatever is uh, raising the issue, it's um, it's still it it adds to the process. Because that means although we're doing it. You know, there are certain parts of our doing that will maybe not so obvious to us and uh, just needs extra energy. It's the same thing like we're using words, but we can invoke energy to revitalize that word and direct that booty energy into our statements. So it would be easier for, for us, or not easier, but at least possible for us to bring in that energy as we do that not to sag onto the mental plane you know which is beautiful and needed but to a certain level is a is a step down from uh, from the from the energy of the soul it's very small but still down kind of less vital you know a little bit less vital um so so we won't get stuck on that mental form and keep connecting with the essence within that form. And uh, yeah. And again, many things that we're doing and doesn't mean we can't do in a deeper or more clearer way. It's it's just a process of evolving, of group of becoming a group disciple, out of you know the group of individuals that are well versed in certain processes. And thank you so much, uh, Helen, for for saying that. It's just um, really these capacity to hear each other. Because when we expect certain things, not expect when people say this, certain thoughts and stuff, sometimes the variation might be very slight, very slight, you know, and you can't even grasp it really. But it's it's almost the same, but not just the same. It's something slightly different. And when the group reflects that difference, allows that difference, then it's easier to um, anchor that realization. So it is really an essential part you now to me the, of the group work. This extra space <laughs> that allows things to be precipitated in a slightly different way. And then through that, make the next step forward. Speaking of bringing in more Buddhic energy, that really resonated. Um, and I it got me to thinking of just the fundamental uh, mechanics of the way energy moves and who we are and what we're doing and what our part is. And I know we discussed, I think Katya mentioned like the mental plane that we're trying to bring, you know, people up to mental plane, but, um, you know, energy flows down from above or it's already there and it just penetrates everything that is. Um, but bringing in more Buddhic energy that might be, um, which is the love wisdom, which is the Christ consciousness, um, that might be more of where our work might be pointing us to because we are already the grounded physical etheric forces that are in the physical plane. So not only are we working through the mental and astral etheric, everything's coming down. Um, but if we chose to 
focus more on the buddhic plane which is where we meet the fifth kingdom and um the ashram which is more or less their um their home uh we're kind of i think somebody mentioned we were docking points or anchors so i think that that kind of is a really important thing to think about when we think about the mechanics of moving the energy um, and how it moves. So thanks for bringing that up because that really resonated. Thank you. long time ago, um, I don't remember the circumstances at which that was uh, suggested, but uh, Katya used to uh, say this, like offer this formula that's uh, kind of criteria for esoteric work. Does it, does life adds up as a result of that or life is diminishes? And it's, pretty much summarizes what uh, I feel we've been shared several times already. It it's could be an important principle to hold, especially when we talk about structures and rituals and even policies. Do those rituals allow us to increase the life that pour through the group or not? So that's, I think it's an, it should be an important criteria for everything we do. This is not our regular new moon meeting. It's our open forum sh sharing. And so um, preparing the, I, the the structure for today's meeting, we plan to have a, a meditation at the end. But the flow of conversation where it took us uh, uh, felt much more important than just going the right time into the meditation and uh, but the limitations of time are still real and so we don't have much time left uh, I ask permission to extend our meeting a little bit uh, up to the vigil time and uh, that we could finalize this uh, sharing today and uh, before going into this final item, I want to ask if anyone would like to add anything else. If so, please do it now. Okay, this is uh, Maria Victoria. Uh, I'm happy that uh, the discount this discussion center and uh, body body energy because his energy is compassion and I believe that is uh, can be the key of the work compassion to experience love is important to experience compassion and be connected with the real world like that doesn't uh, everything doesn't remind in the in the energies of the mind is to focus in the situations that we are facing we are in europe 
facing the movement as a wave uh, from Africa going north and, and um, to be center um, building a pyramid in the north and the south and be center uh, giving compassion to this humanity experience can be really nice um, uh, work to do in a group. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Victoria, very important. Very important. Uh, this is Judy. I will just add that uh, as that last person was speaking, uh, Victoria, I believe, um, what I'm hearing is something that we haven't mentioned at all, which is the questions themselves. Um, are the questions uh, pertinent to preparing the way? Are the questions broad enough to bring out diverse views? Are the questions broad enough to bring in uh, Buddhic resonance? Um, so the group as a whole really uh, doesn't have um, a whole lot of focus or input on the specific topic. And so I would just say um, with what has been shared, looking at whether the questions themselves are energizing us to move to that next level. And so I would say that the questions are the reflection of the group work and of and channeled through certain individuals, but still it's a, it's a, it's a, a reflection and we can reflect on the reflection and we can look in deep into that and uh, um, that's going to be evolving. You know, are they, well, that's, that's to discuss, you know, to add to them. You know, whatever we see as missing or not missing really because missing is the wrong word. Whatever we can see can be added, you know, expanded and uh, and uh, specified sometimes the other way around. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so that's what we come up with at the moment. chat and uh, two comments uh, thanking Judy for your um, observation. If I could add one sentence, you know, uh, those questions are on the, in a way it's a starting point, you know, at last. I urge us not to see it as a limitation. That's where we start. I would just add too that as more of us take more and more responsibility in um, creating the questions, um, there's going to be a great deal of diversity, I think, that more than we've experienced so far. And um, I think Katya, yes, is seeing them as starting points is a good, good way to do it. And having having us all take part in creating them is is uh, uh, which I think we've been asked to do. 
this year so far is people have been asked to um, help um, help uh, help with the presentation each month. Um, we've, we had a sign up sheet for that. Uh, so I think that that's going to make a big different difference as more and more people uh, choose to do that work. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. It's uh, to me like this uh, uh, aspirant, no, disciple, aspirant uh, was initiate, knows be because he works and not the other way around. So we work and we'll know and we'll learn more. And uh, I think it is one of the best things that you know could happen when each of us actually pitches in and maybe up like really out of the level of their comfort. But it's uh, it's a pilot project. It's a pilot project. Not looking for perfection, looking for the engagement. You know. Thank you for sharing and thank you for staying uh, later. Tracy, I would ask your permission to take us in the meditation because uh, it's a meditation we prepare. It is, uh, it's, uh, we don't have enough time for that, but I suggest we pause now uh, for minutes and focus on the purpose considering everything we shared today how we recognize what is the purpose of our work what is the essence and let us invoke the energy of Virgo that helps us relating to the deepest essence deepest meaning with all these important aspects and the rituals and the uh, principles. What is the main thing about what we do? And then after a minute, let us go around the circle and offer our sense of the purpose as we recognize it. Just one word, one phrase, one sentence. Towards a new spirituality, building bridges for an integrated world. Feeding the Antikarana. Welcoming the higher note of the emerging ray four from Buddhic impulse. Radiating loving compassion to and through humanity. Preparing hearts for a more synthetic view. Sending love out. Buddhic. A living bridge of Buddhic energy. Linking. A lovely word, linking.
building a living bridge with one arm up to receive and one down to help others up. Treading the path of the group progress. Be malleable as a group and adapt to the higher energies of booty to be brought down into manifestation. Unity through diversity. Bringing life into structure and creating structure for life, remaining harmless in within discomfort. Let us now focus in our group chalice. Built with our recognized and articulated sense of the purpose. We magnetize it with the light of Virgo. We invoke the will to good to empower our group intention. We lift our group chalice towards the hierarchy, offering it as a group service to the divine plan.
we turn towards humanity and offer our group chalice a service to support the collective evolution of humankind. As we stand in this point of focused tension between the hierarchy and humanity, we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Focus back in our localities. And keep the point of connection with the group jealous. Thank you, friends. We would appreciate your continuous flow of questions and to be continued.